Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Katie Samuel. Um, you're welcome and you are in safe hands. Today, I want to talk about greenhouse farming for snails. And actually, this will be my last video on greenhouse farming for snails. This will be my major video. Um, so again, I want to give a breakdown of the reasons why I say that people in our sub-region, which is in West Africa, or even let me narrow it down to Ghana and Nigeria, that we don't need to go into greenhouse snow farming. All we need is the trench or gallery system. And I'll break it down for you so that, I mean, even with common sense, you can agree with me. A couple of people have um, dialogued with me I mean, the people who are very interested in greenhouse farming, the people who build the greenhouses for people, I've had a dialogue with them, and still, they fail to, they fail to understand that greenhouse farming is not safe for snails. So the first thing I even want to touch on is uh, the setup. The setup that a path has been created for humans and the snails are on a certain side and the humans are not allowed to walk on the soil. It's all a fallacy. I'm saying it's a fallacy because you can pause this video and go check other um, greenhouse videos on snails. I mean, in our sub region. If you can count up to about four or maybe even two or three. I'm not talking about uh, videos where they are launching a greenhouse farm person. I'm talking about when they want to show you their beautiful greenhouse farm you would realize that every video that you watch they are not walking on the pavement that they suppose that it has been designed for for the humans you realize that in all the videos they are walking on the soil now every every time they step on the soil it is a potential kill to a snail you are you are either stepping on a snail or you are stepping on eggs that are buried under the soil. So I asked myself, why do you want to go into a type of farm where you put the snails at more risk by stepping on them and all of that? In the train system, we do not end up stepping on them. It's very controlled, very, very controlled. Nothing goes unseen. So that is the first step. The setup is a fallacy, it's a fallacy when they tell you that Humans have a place where they walk and blah, blah. At the end of the day, they walk on the soil and it's all over, all over the internet. You can see it for yourself. I had a conversation with somebody who seems to have invested heavily in this greenhouse farm. And then he seems to compare the helix species. You know, snails, we have the species that's called helix which is usually found in, in the European countries. With what we have in our sub region, the, the Akatina, Akatina, the Maginata, the Fulica. And it's funny because um, the, the white people feel comfortable farming helix in a greenhouse without vegetation, without um, a lot of things that you would find in the supposed greenhouse that these people say they are doing in Ghana and Nigeria. You realize that none of that is there. And it's because the helix species is usually found on rocks. It does not care about um, the vegetation that the Katina, Katina and Maginata really need. The, the amount of humidity that Akatina, Katina and Maginata really need to survive. The helix species does not really need that. So if you're trying to farm Akatina, Katina and Maginata, thinking or looking at the escargot and then the helix species, which is in Europe, then it's like you are comparing mangoes to oranges. It does, it does not make sense. And even them, they have a way of doing it. Now, there's another um, um, school of thought that um, the type of greenhouse, I mean, I spoke to one of them. It's on one of my videos where um, one of them was saying that even 90% even of the greenhouse farms that are in Ghana and Nigeria are fake greenhouse farms for, for snail farms and that um, he's looking at the European standard. I mean, that means involving more technology. I mean, uh, well, I can agree to him as to, to a certain extent, but still, I feel like 
the snails we have in our sub region do not need a greenhouse farm actually when you do that you are putting them at more risk and if you are putting them at more risk it means you are putting your investment at at a higher risk if you if i if i invest in 500,000 snails in a trench or gallery system and you also farm in 500,000 snails in a in a greenhouse farm whatever it is i am likely to gain more than you and the facts are there they like to challenge with um, estimations and averages and all of that but in the gallery or train system we have the the exact figures so if i tell you that i'm expecting a certain profit margin in the next 24 months i mean somebody in the greenhouse cannot really argue with me The next thing is that the gentleman seems to say that so far as there are showers in the greenhouse that water the farm every evening ants are not going to be able to survive over there and i'm here to to to, to debunk that because actually if you're anyone who has dealt with ants in your residence you know that no matter how much you spray no matter how much um you use water so far as there is feeding over there, they will come. They will keep coming. Ants are persistent. It will take a very long time to eradicate them. Especially the only way out is when you take the food out of reach. Now, when you come to our train system, um, we have a gutter around the pen. We have also cemented the floor of the inside of the pen. So it's very difficult for an ant to intrude. When it comes to a greenhouse, there's not been any cementing so far as you are putting feed there and another thing the they lie to you that the, the snails only eat the fresh ve vegetation there but i'd like you to visit some of the greenhouse farms you realize that they put formulated feed they put oranges watermelons all sort of things over there as additional feed so so far as you are putting these food over there ants will keep coming they will lie to you that there are no ants but it's not true the soldier ants will keep coming and then the evidence again is on youtube the videos are there you would find it again in the trench or gallery system we harvest the eggs to a different place i've tried to explain in the past i will do it again sometimes those of us who run the system where we have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the snails we tend to realize that if there's a little negligence sometimes you come back and you realize that the adult snails have just swept through the eggs that were laid uh, days before and they end up damaging a lot of eggs you know that and i always say this that every every single egg you lose is is your money so if you due to negligence um you come and then sometimes you find a clutch of eggs Sometimes 400, 500, 600 eggs, one clutch. And then even though they have hatched, not a single hatchling was able to climb on top of this, the, the soil to come and feed. So you come to your farm, you dig and you realize that 500 eggs have hatched all right, but all the snails have died under the soil, which is worrying. Now you can imagine if you have such a situation in a greenhouse farm. If those of us in the trench system are even witnessing this, you can imagine a greenhouse farm. I asked the gentleman on YouTube and he said that uh, the, the eggs that do not hatch and the ones that die under the soil will all become compost. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that if you have 500 eggs under the soil times even 50% of your current snail population, if you have 100 snails, 500 times just even 50, 50 snails. That's about 25,000 uh, snails dead. Now 25,000 times an average of, let's say 10 cities. Can you imagine? That's 250,000 Ghana cities right under your soil. So all these things, it's funny and amusing when I see people going all out for this greenhouse thing. It's very, very funny because you are losing your eggs and you're losing your investment. So you can imagine sometimes even here too, some, uh, we have eggs that do not even hatch at all because of the environment. 
that the adult snails find themselves. So we have to transport them to a conducive soil where we have a way of mixing it. We dig it very shallow. We only sprinkle. We have we take care of them. We monitor them, and then we realize that we have a high hatchability rate. You cannot do these things in a greenhouse farm. And I don't know what kind of business you want to do that you do not want to see the figures in real time. You do not want to see your progress in real time. So that is with the eggs. You'll be losing eggs and losing money. In every, in every snail farm, we know that injury is one of the normal things that um, we, we encounter. In the trench or gallery system, we have a, a lot of leaves in the, in the pen that it cushions the snails when they climb at night and fall. Now, in the, in the greenhouse system, where they have very tall walls, you can, again, you can check on YouTube. You would see that a lot of the cute, cute, cute videos that they post, it's all of, it's, you can see snails climbing the tall greenhouse walls and it's, and it's funny, it's cute, but it's funny because when they fall from that, from that height, their shell is gonna crack no matter what because of the distance. Also, the fact that they do not have a lot of mulch like we do here, have the leaves, so when they fall, it's no brainer. Their, crack, their, their shell is gonna crack. And if that happens, they stand a 90% chance of, of, of dying. So actually when you compare greenhouse to the trench system, the injury is more on the greenhouse farming side as compared to the trench or gallery system. Also in our system, if there's any injury, I don't remember the last time we had an injury here though, but if there's even any injury, so far as we are coming to feed them today or we are taking out the feed tomorrow because of the relationship we have with them no matter what we'll find the injured snail we have a way of separating them to what we call a clinic we change their feeding infuse more calcium we give them some preferential treatment and then they heal in no time in the greenhouse system how are you going to do that you can't do it you can't find injured snails unless you want to walk on the soil and find them, which also you are not allowed to. Because the moment you walk on the soil, you are killing snails, you are destroying eggs. This is common sense. I don't see why anybody wants to go into greenhouse and spend uh, 45,000, 50,000. Some people have even spent 100,000 cities on one, on one greenhouse, you see? And the gentleman on YouTube says that now there's a technology where they electrocute the lower side of, of the greenhouse. So when the snails try to climb, they, it shocks them and then they fall back. Well, that's more money. Good good invention, but that's that's more money to invest. So at least that's one thing to mitigate in the greenhouse. Mortality is normal. Sometimes, we estimate around 10% mortality rate in the farm per annum, right? Um, but when I'm, when I'm teaching people, I always give them the 20% mortality rate. Now, we mentioned these things and then I'm trying to say that in the greenhouse, you cannot tell your mortality rate. Here, when we come here in the morning and we perceive a strong smell, it leads us to where the snail has died. We pick it up before ants decide to find means and ways to come and finish the meat up or anything. In a greenhouse, if there's a mortality, you're not allowed to walk on the soil. So if the snail is at a distance, how do you go there to pick the dead snail? It's a question I, 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 I ask these people. Because again, every step is a, is a potential kill and a potential damage of eggs. So how do you go and pick up that, that dead snail? On, again, on YouTube, if you do your survey, you realize that for most greenhouse farmers, by the time they even find the dead snail, they only go to see an empty shell. An empty shell. It means ants have already come for their share. And it's funny when they tell it, there are no ants because ants are there. And that's how the meat is gone. It's rotten and gone. Here, it's hard to come by an empty shell just like that. 
very very rare because the moment it dies we perceive it we pick it out we mitigate the risk of ants coming in and spreading diseases all of that so again we can check our mortality rate by picking these these snails in real time and calculating and every death we investigate whether it's ants whether it's overwatering whether it's dry soil whether it's a, a pest whether it's a worm whether it's um low feeding we investigate every single mortality so that we make sure that everything is fine in the greenhouse i beg how do you do that you can't you can't do that in real time actually you say you are creating a, a forest for them so you're not even supposed to go in in that place in the first place you only go in there um when you want to harvest them if you really are trying to create a mini forest for them you must only go in there when you are going to harvest them you are not allowed to step on the soil you are not allowed to go outside the pavement for human beings you are not allowed to put any foreign feed in there they are supposed to survive on the on the vegetation you've grown there that is the whole idea behind behind greenhouse if that's how you want to say it so i guess everything i've mentioned sums up the fact that in the gallery or train system you're allowed you're, you're able to do proper bookkeeping know your hatchability rates know your mortality rates know um the competition even when it comes to feeding because when you come you're able to check maybe previous days ago they could eat a bowl full of pawpaw now they eat just half bowl you can investigate what is going on what is wrong and all of that you can check every single thing your hatching rates like i said out of 500 uh, eggs how many of them have hatched i mean you're able to tell all these things in a greenhouse you can't check any of the things i've mentioned not even injury rates you do not even know how many snows have been injured in the last three months or six months you can't check any of that you get it and i don't know any businessman who wants to do that have a business and just um, go with estimations and averages and some of them are quick to compare it to um, farming corn or maize that they don't need to count the maize they just need to do an estimation anyway if i'm harvesting if i have three acres of maize and i harvest one acre i know that it's left with two acres how about you in the greenhouse snow farm if you harvest 500 snails how many are left you don't know you actually do not know so it's funny when these comparisons are done I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to enlighten people to know the facts, the truth, so that you protect your investment. The thing is that if you are going into trench uh, or gallery system, you can also go into it big time. They are quick to say that people who do the trench and gallery are poor people. That's not a fact at all. If you want to do 500,000 snails, I've seen Nigerians do a very big trench system farm. Do it too. So far as you have 500,000 snails to start with listen it doesn't matter if you employ 20 to 40 people because your your profit margin can pay these people and you still have your bonuses in hundreds of thousands of ghana cities so what's your problem it is not a problem at all so um thank you for watching this video i'm happy you have learned something and i'm closing the chapter on greenhouse uh, snow farming um, if you go to any proper greenhouse farm like bell pepper and tomatoes, you see that they have bookkeeping for every single thing. Nothing goes unnoticed. Nothing is not calculated. So if you are doing greenhouse farm, you should actually be increasing your investment and not killing your investment indirectly. It is beautiful, but it's not necessary for Akatina, Akatina, Maginata that we farm, we farm in our sub-region. Subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can get a lot of um, information just as this. And then I realized that if you subscribe and like and comment, we we get up. I mean, we end up being suggested to other other people to learn. Have a great day.